Good afternoon. It's another uh, hour we're going to spend today with uh, two lovely young ladies who've come in, and this will uh, be part of the history of running in Memphis. On the far right, Lauren Paquette. In the middle, Beth Garrison, and I'll let them, we'll start with Lauren, tell us when she started, where she started, what she's doing now, and we'll go to Beth after that, and I'll just sit here. Sure, so I'm Lauren Paquette. Um, I started running when I was 17 years old in Little Rock, Arkansas, where I'm from. Um, we didn't, I went to a really small private division two high school and we didn't have um, the sport of cross country or track and field at my school until I was a junior. And um, we got a new British literature professor that year, Rob Wistrand, who ran for University of Arkansas, which is a, a NCAA powerhouse um, under John McDonald's tutelage. They won, the men won 25 consecutive cross country national championships. And so it was a great great resource um, to have for us to have him at our school. Um, he started, he got me, he just, he asked me if I wanted to run at the state cross country championships for him because there was a girl on the team who was sick that week and wouldn't be able to race and for high school um, and for college um, championships you need five players or runners on your team for your team to count for a state title and so I used to be fast I used to beat the boys in mini Olympics and the sprints <laughs> during elementary school and so so um, I said, sure, and, 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 and that was when I was in high school in Arkansas, we ran 4Ks um, instead of a 5K or two mile like Texas. And so went out there, I did pretty well. I wanna say I might have gotten third. I walked for part of it and was so confused when you're at the start line and they fire a gun right next so loud. Um, so <laughs> it was all pretty new to me, but um, the rest is history. I got my um, undergraduate degree from Baylor University where I was a walk-on to the cross-country track team there and um, progressed all through from my freshman to senior year and um, was good enough to, to be able to secure a professional contract with ASICs out of college. Um, ran for them for a few years then worked for a few years and moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, where I trained with a group there. And um, just the last few years have been sponsored now by Brooks Running instead of ASICS. And um, moved to Memphis, Tennessee about five years ago. And so I'm now sponsored by Brooks as a professional elite um, road racing and track and field athlete. I specialize in the 5,000 meters and the 3,000 meters indoors, but I've run everything from the 800 to the 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Beth. Okay. My running did not start as early as yours <laughs> did. I was uh, somewhere in my 30s and had ran a little bit on and off when I had kids to lose weight and it just kind of went to the background. And a friend called and said, hey, there's this women's running program. Do you want to do it? And I said, sure. And she said, good, I'm on my way to pick you up. And so I did the uh, women's run walk program for the 5K and I thought, oh, this is the best distance in the world and no one would ever want to run more than this. So did that and during that she said her sister-in-law had walked a half marathon. We should do, we could do that. And I said, sure, because that's how I have gotten into more problems. So we did, we signed up right then for St. Jude and it was pretty late. That was 2007 and did not really train. <laughs> And, but had so much fun. We did the half marathon, we ran when we felt like it, we walked when we felt like it, and I had a blast. And I'm like, okay, I could do this, but I would never go a step farther. Those people are nutso. So the next year I did it again, and I trained for it like I should have, and knocked a whole lot of time off, and finished it and thought, hmm, I bet I could do a marathon. Let me try that. And. That's where the crazy kind of started. Um, I did St. Jude the first time in 2009 and fell in love with marathons. Um, I suffered at the end, like most people do in marathons, 
but across the finish line, not going, I'm never doing this again, but going, this is what I plan to do the next time. This is how I'm gonna fix the cramps, and this is how I'm gonna fix this. And, um, but I was pretty sure I would never run any further than that because, you know, those people are crazy. And then another friend was like, hey, I'm signing up for this 50K at Shelby Forest. Do you wanna do it with me? And I did Swamp Stomper, and that, I fell in love with ultras. That, I realized that's in the woods, running for hours and hours and hours was what I really love to do. And um, I've done Swamp Stomper six times now. Wow. And um, St. Jude was my, this past year was my 23rd marathon. Golly. And um, a friend of mine once again said, hey, there's this 50 miler, you should think about doing that. And I'm like, okay, why not? And did Tunnel Hill. And I thought, oh my God, this is the most training I ever want to do. And I, it was awesome. I am now in love with that race. And um, was pretty sure I would never go in more than 50 miles. I've said this, you know, I said this from the 5K <laughs> distance on, I'm not running any further than this. Um, but I was pretty sure after that. And then a couple of three years ago, at Swamp Stomper every year, they give away the Hildy Haynes Award. And part of that award is entry into the Arkansas Traveler 100. And so, James Holland, the race director, you know, presented me with the award, and it's presented right before the race starts. So not only do you oh have this my. pressure of a 100 mile <laughs> race that's being no. given to you, you also <laughs> have to think about it while you run 32 miles. I can't imagine that. And Perfect. So, yeah, <laughs> and so when I like finish the race, the first thing he asked is, he goes, so are you gonna accept it? Did you think about it? I said, I thought about it for every single step I took. <laughs> and I'm like, it's an award, you can't turn that down. You have to do it, right? Absolutely, so, it's an honor. <laughs> yes, it's an honor, right? You know, you got, who's gonna turn that down? You dragged me and by the tractor. So <laughs> I did that, I trained for that. I had an amazing race crew with me that kept me going. I had a pacer that I had a couple of mental breakdowns along the way, I hallucinated <laughs> a little bit, um, but you know, he was there by my side the whole time. He was encouraging. I had one moment in the middle of the night. We'd done 75, 80 miles, and I just wow. looked over at him, and I just, I said, are you disappointed in me? And I just burst into tears. And he's like, stop, wait a minute. He goes, look around. Look at the stars. I mean, it was beautiful. We were up on the top of a mountain. <laughs> it was amazing. He goes, no, I'm not disappointed in you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, but it's those highs and lows, and they just work me through that, And which is something I found in ultra running. It's, you know, from the very top of elite people all the way to the people that are rolling in at the very end, there is such an encouragement with each other and a supportiveness. It seems to be. And I just, those are my people. Yeah. I love those it's, people. There's a real community uh, and it, it, feeling to all of that, those yeah. folks that do that. It really, Crazy yeah. distances. Yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but, no, no, so next you'll do the 500 mile, I guess, because no, you don't want to do it. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I, think, I think 100 is kind of my limit. Oh, okay. And I'm not gonna say oh. that, everybody keeps asking. Yeah, so never. when are you gonna do another one? And I'm like, or are you gonna do another one? I'm like, I'm not gonna say never because I've said never so many times. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say never. I'm not. I'm not gonna do one this year. I've already got a 50 miler I've signed up for, but Good. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna knock a hundred miler right. off the plate yet. Um, which brings us to a point, I guess. That what changes have y'all seen in women's running in, they'll say, the last 15 years, 10, 15 years? I'm sure there have been changes I have noticed more like in the longer distances more women are actually participating the okay. first year I did um, Swamp Stomper the first couple of ultras I did there weren't nearly as many women out there and now I think it make women make up over half of the participants in it and I think just 
I don't know, it's getting away from this, oh, we can't do that, to, hey, I'm going to lace up my shoes and I'm going to be right out there with the big boys. Yeah. And I just think, I think that is a, a very positive change. I mean, um, Camille Heron just set the world record for 100 miles. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Uh, mm. Yeah, she did. Um, Beat the big boys. She demolished the big boys. <laughs> um, she did it at Tunnel Hill, where, and I was oh, there yeah, doing okay. the 50 this year, right. and she was amazing to watch she was just but you know and it's you know this is from something that was going from such a male dominated to having yeah, a woman yeah. I'm, I'm feeling it. the pressure so. yeah. <laughs> you may have a little bit of an element of surprise too with yeah. the men <laughs> yeah yeah just not ex just under right rating yeah. them yeah. but it's the same with like with jennifer far davis mm -hmm. and she set the at record the appalachian oh, trail yeah. record and i think it's been broken since but mm -hmm. I mean, it is it is amazing, and I think just people seeing that, people who maybe haven't run a step in their lives, is mm -hmm. inspiring. Well, we see the half marathon has shown such enormous growth, mm -hmm. and yeah. primarily because women coming into it, and, and we see now that women make up about 55% of the, I think, the entrance into half marathons they see that it's you can actually achieve that you can right. walk you can run walk you can have fun doing it mm -hmm. and some will it'll rub off on them they can become more competitive and they'll go further or faster or whatever happens but uh, uh, that's what we see and Paul Sachs was in here a couple of weeks ago and Paul said he he foresaw in the next couple of years the growth of 10,000 meter runs mm -hmm. races again which had declined, so. uh, and he's, <laughs> uh, he says, you know, that he thinks that half marathon will decline and the 10,000 meters will mm -hmm. grow because people can look at that and then go, wow, it's only two 5Ks. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like, you know, a 5K is another 10 miles for the half marathon, so, so we'll see. I, I think it's interesting for me because I feel like I have one foot kind of in the local community mm -hmm. running scene and then I have one foot in the elite scene and they're actually talking about doing away with the 10,000 at Olympics and World Championships which would be sad I yeah, think because yeah, yeah. it is yes. such an interesting distance Gosh. Um, yeah although on the track on the track though which obviously they don't do like there's not an Olympic 10k right yeah. like so like usually if you're saying if you're referring to track races it would be 10,000 or 5,000 and road is 5k or 10k um, one other thing that I see as in the last 15 years or even before that too is just the longevity of um, women running too especially at um, at quicker paces like with Shalane Flanagan's New York City Marathon win she's 36 years old and I think you know even five ten years ago you would get written off as being yeah. too old and you're washed up and you're gonna start going backwards but just performances like hers and other women who are older than the typical mm -hmm. um, elite running age too like I'm 31 um, so a few years ago I'd, I would have been considered about done mm -hmm. but I'm still improving and people are still improving and now they're seeing that People used to think that, you know, your window of getting faster was this age, and now it's people are proving that wrong. Um, so that's really exciting, too, from my perspective. And your so. recent, uh, you were at uh, the Armory. Yes. And yeah. then the Millsaps game, which is also. Uh, yeah, the, the Millrose game, Millrose which is, game. which is a, it's a big stage. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, I, you know, there were a couple of girls who ran really fast who were younger, but the majority of people who ran really fast times were anywhere from, like, 28 to 32. So it's cool. Like, it's starting to shift. Cool. Yeah. And, and you uh, finished... Well, you can tell me about the finish and your times because I think it's significant. Sure. Yeah, I finished six in the Millrose Games last week, which it's the um, probably the most competitive indoor um, indoor track meet apart from a World Championships, um, which happens every two years. Um, Miller Rose happens every year, and this year I was lucky enough and to be able to be a participant, and it was such an honor to be included. Um, 
So I ran a six second personal record in the 3,000 meters, meters, which is just under two miles, and hit the um, indoor world standard, which is just a mark, it's a time mark that you have to um, dip under to, to be eligible to compete at the world championships. And so I was, I bested the mark by three seconds, and so I'm, I'm eligible to go if I make the team. Um, but. It's really, it's very interesting that the elite community in track is also very supportive, but it's a different kind of supportive, yeah. where I think that a difference is when you line up on at a, at a road race, where everyone has their goals, and everyone's competitive and wants to finish high and yeah. place high, but everyone's still like, I'm so excited for you, yeah. good luck, and then it tracks me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After the race yeah. is over, everyone's friends again, but it yeah. is, it's, yeah. yeah, you'll get some stink eyes. <laughs> and everyone's pretty macho. I mean, it's yeah. just how it is. So I wonder when you're say, in your mid 40s if you'll be doing marathons. I would like, Come I was just telling side. them the, the longest I've ever run is 16 miles. And so I need to, you know, pay my dues and take the steps, run a 20 miler, 22 yeah. miler. Um, but yes, I do plan on running a marathon someday, and I'm hoping that I get the bug for that too, because I always just hear about my friends saying, this one was so fun, yeah. and it was so pretty, and just, so I hope that, you know, I'm not one of those, I think it's rare nowadays for people to run a marathon and say, I'm never doing that again, usually it's the opposite, yeah. usually yeah. you get bitten, and then you want it's to do usually, it again. It's usually the first, like the, that day, they're never yeah. doing again, yeah. when they cross the finish, they're never doing again. Let it sink in for about three or four days, a week and or so. And you'll be and sore. The, and but yeah, that so pain goes away, and you're feeling, yeah, you're like, oh, that wasn't so yeah. bad. I plan on doing that, but I don't know, I will just want to most likely do it just for fun. Like, yeah. I'll want to sign up for one that's pretty. Mm -hmm instead of competitive, I don't right, yeah. so we'll see. But <laughs> and you have some uh, some more 50 milers lined up? I've got another 50, I'm running Tunnel Hill this year. Okay, okay. Um, I love it, it's a fun race, it's fast. Some people say it's boring, I think it's pretty. It's um, on a rails to trails course um, mm -hmm. up in Illinois, Southern Illinois. And it's, I don't know, I, it's the, t the you got the right old train tunnel. Oh yeah, and it's very cool for that. It's just, and so those are some of the things you see on these trail races. You the waterfalls and mm -hmm. the, the nature, and and that's part of what draws me into that. I think I, <laughs> you know, the first one I did was at uh, Sillamore, and um, you know I'd been up there camping yeah. over the years for decades, and. Uh, Seeing it as mm -hmm. on a run is just it's so exciting to, to come to one of those overlooks and say, look, but they're already passing you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's actually next week for yeah, me. I'm doing that one. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I'm always asked to go up there, but I'm like, if I don't run it, I don't feel like I'm going to go up and party. It's, yeah. I can stay here yeah. and do that. So. Yeah. But you know the hiking is good up there too. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful it's course. Be it is a wonderful it is a course. Beautiful uh, course. Uh, your husband mm -hmm. is at the University of Memphis. Uh, yeah. And tell me a bit about Max and his exploration of uh, running runners. Yeah. So my husband Max Paquette is a professor at University of Memphis. Um, he teaches biomechanics. Um, exercise physiology and anatomy um, and he is very heavy into research and so he um, does a lot of different studies on um, different populations um, he has so many studies going on all the time it's hard to keep him keep him straight but one of his big focuses is on um, osteoarthritic patients and how to ease their discomfort through biomechanics which is basically studying um, just how to basically perform more efficient movements either 
for um, pain management or injury prevention or for elite or for um, efficient performance. And so he's done, done a lot of work with step widths for osteoarthritic patients, how best they should walk up and down stairs. But he also does a lot of gait analyses for different runners um, in town too. And we have the the SPAC University of Memphis, which is basically like a health um, health and um, exercise performance laboratory, where they do all kinds of things like VO2 max testing, um, measuring your gait, seeing what you need to fix maybe in your stride to stop from being injured, all kinds of things. But um, Max is Canadian and he ran for a college up in um, Canada called University of Guelph and he was a steeplechaser, which is just under two miles oh, yeah. worth on the track of, and two miles of hard running plus running jumping over barriers and water water pits. Uh, so it's very interesting. It does get its origins from horse steeple chasing, but it's yeah, but with humans. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but Max is also my coach. He's been my coach for the last three to three and a half to four years. And um, so it's an interesting dynamic for sure, but I think it works very well for us. And um, he, when he's in shape and his calves aren't bothering him, he paces me on a lot of my workouts, except for today. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually came out to the track with me earlier and um, he had this machine that before every interval that I ran, he attached it to my finger and it measured how much oxygen that I was consuming. Wow. And so it was basically, so he was testing me while I was working out, which made it harder for me, but <laughs> it went well. <laughs> Gave me a lot of good information. So um, yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's what he does. So we're, we're a good team. Yep. You're, uh your training, uh, you run with the, some of the uh, local running stores, mm -hmm. fun run groups, and yes. training groups too. Mm -hmm. uh, which ones do you participate with? Um, I run with Bre Breakaway Running, it has my heart. Um, that's who I called up when I was decided I wanted to do a marathon. They had a, at the time it was a very, very small group of people to do the Breakaway Marathon Training Group. Really? Well. Very small. And I, I called and I was like, here I am, not 20 something. And um, just picturing in my head, okay, all these 20 something athletes are going to be there. And so I called and I'm like, and they're like, yeah, we meet this day. And I was like, I'm going to keep up with these people if it kills me. And I got there and it's like a diverse group of people, all shapes and sizes. Um, it was a small little group. There were maybe 15 people. Oh my gosh. 15 or 20 people in the marathon training group, which is now upwards of 300. Right. Um, and met some friends there that I'm still dearest friends with this day today and um, but breakaway has my heart and then I've kind of collected my own little group of people that from here and there that I train with and they'll be they'll call me like yesterday they're like okay what are we doing on Saturday and I'm like, <laughs> okay Saturday let's do this and so I've kind of done that and then the women's run walk program mm -hmm. that I started this crazy journey with the past six years five or six years I have been coaching with and so and the numbers there have grown too the numbers there have grown they've kind of plateaued a little bit okay. um, but yeah it's still a great group I've coached the group that I started running with so I'm now one of the head coaches for that program did the same women come every year there are some that come every year I've had some that I've coached for like five years running okay. and then every year there's new women that right. come also and they bring their friends and I try to encourage all of my friends who are non runners to at least come out and how many are in the group now uh, would you consider um, last year's women's walk run program? The, uh, I'm not sure about the whole thing the whole group our group was about 40 people in okay. our in your group in my gr my right. one group I coach uh, intermediate two runners which how many are, coaches are there um, there a are bunch. a bunch of coaches because there's like two groups of walkers there's beginning runners which is a huge huge group yeah um, 
and that's that has like the base, the bulk of the runners in it. And so they try to keep. We had pretty much at least a coach for every couple of girls, oh, wow. couple of ladies wow. that were running. And you know, it just. I want people to love it as much as I do, and so I think that helps if you. Mm -hmm. You know, you share, you know, my insights. I don't know everything about right. running. I don't even pretend to, but I know things that have worked for me and things that have not worked for me. Well, they know and, your passion, too. And, and, I, I, think that, and I think they pick up on that. Yeah, of course. And so, you know, we share stories and, yeah. and just the encouragement that's there. Yes, so. it, 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 it must be grand to have, to be, have people come to you. They see that you've actually yeah. done this right. and uh, not... Yeah, nothing against elite runners, but yeah. you know, I mean, you know, I can go to the yeah. track and I can go, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, I mean, with elite running, like I do most of my workouts on myself, but I prefer to have people out there with me too, even if you're not doing the same paces or speeds. So like um, a few of my friends in town who are runners will come out and just do their own thing mm -hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't even matter I mean a lot of times too there will be we have a group that meets on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock from the breakaway store and there's all different kinds of paces that we just start together and then it together and get get brunch yeah. and so <laughs> it's really I think there's this misconception about elite runners that they're I don't know either standoffish or that you can't like you can't connect with them, but the thing is that everybody came from the same, like everybody started somewhere, and you know, there's different kinds of genes and talent and all that, and then hard work ethic, there's a bunch of factors that go into it, but um, you know, at the end of the day, we're all gonna end up in the same place. Well, that's and true. And we're all gonna get slower, and mm -hmm. you know, and just, I mean, even me being, um, an elite, like I've felt a lot of community support from people who um, run way different races than me or just are encouraging. Absolutely. And it's like, I used to work at Breakaway and just, you know, people come into the store and I try not to even talk about my own racing because yeah. sometimes <laughs> it, it, it's, I feel like it's not relatable. And so you're wanting to, you know, ask how was your run? And then it's just about forging relationships and building community really and I mean right. at the end of the day like we're all people and we're all, mm -hmm. <laughs> we all have faults and you know even if you're a fast runner like that's nothing to look down your nose on maybe people who aren't as fast as you and so um it's it's been really good for me I think working it I worked at breakaway for four years and so um, it was an awesome place to work as far as getting into just the community and like just camaraderie with people too so I think the uh, and the operable word there is community we mm -hmm. see it it's evolved since the 70s when we started the Wednesday night run mm -hmm. from uh, Huey's <laughs> and we really, there were four of us, four bachelors, and we were, we wanted to assure ourselves of meeting young women. <laughs> so we started running, we told you know, everybody that you can come out and we'll run with you, we'll run as slow as you want to. Well, that lasted for about six months and then we began to run as fast as we could and, and the women that came out stayed up with us, but it grew into a, a huge community of people where we would have almost 150 people on Wednesday night running from Huey's through the park yeah. and Midtown and back to Huey's to, to rehydrate. Oh my God, I mean, I feel like probably 95% of my friends in Memphis are from the running community. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, and it, when I'm in another community anyway, I still talk about running. I it's know. It's been well, a yes. passion of mine <laughs> for a long time, so. It gets yeah. to be a lifestyle, and it so really it's just yeah. part of your daily routine, and yeah. so it's hard to extricate that. Yeah. And I know that sometimes, like I do have a couple, of, I mean, I have friends outside of Memphis who aren't runners too, because I'm not from here, but, um, you know, it's it is it just seeps into your conversation. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does it even at work where nobody I work with none of the other nurses run, but they all know I'm a runner, and so it it becomes part of the conversation, and they will ask about it. 
and I'm sure they ask about it with a little fear in their hearts because they're afraid I'm going to actually tell them. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it does. It becomes part of, I mean, it's a part of who you are. Yeah. And I think yep. that kind of comes across. Yeah, absolutely. My older sons were with me in the beginning when I first started running and showed some interest. Of course, mm -hmm. I would drag them out to every 5K and that we had, not that many, 10K and marathon, we'd make them cut up orange slices and hand them out. And, uh, both of them became athletes, although running is secondary f to them. But my 17-year-old, when he told me he wanted to start running, I had to sit him down and tell him it hurts. <laughs> it, it hurts from the beginning to the end. And you really want to do that, then I'm behind you 110% always, and as long as it's fun. And uh, But you see, that community in high yeah. school mm -hmm. and in middle school that were formed of, of yeah. boys who like to run were, mm -hmm. you know, the, you see the football players looking at them going, what's the matter with them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just running. <laughs> but, uh, and it's, it's grand to have both Fleet Feet, which mm -hmm. has its community too right. of, of runners who meet, yeah. and uh, offering yoga mm -hmm. and other activities like that that mm -hmm. keep us cohesive, cohesive mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so, what's next? Um, How, do, I, do, are women, more women going to become involved, or are we going to see this backsliding? I hope more women become involved. I mean, that's, that's my hope. Um, I'm sure it will peak and flow. It has. I've seen that since I've been running. You know, it's real popular for a minute, and then something else comes along, and it's real popular, and then it, once again, running becomes real popular. I think with all of the 5Ks, I mean, there's, you said back the few and far between, now there's four oh, on yeah. any given weekend, <laughs> at least. I think that is getting more and more people involved, too, so hopefully it's a, a lifestyle that will kind of rub off. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had several conversations with people who, I, when I complain that there are too many races, yeah. that the proliferation means that you've diluted the, the, the group into a charity that wants to have a, a nice mm -hmm. race, suddenly finds they only have 100 people that show up when there's another one the same day mm -hmm. that has 150 and there's another one the next mm -hmm. day that has 350. And so how do you adjudicate that? I, I, I don't know that you yeah. can, but it does attract people into the sport. And mm -hmm. you know, as I was told point blank, it's the cheapest sport you can get into. You get <laughs> shoes and shorts. Like, yeah. Well, no. basically, <laughs> no. yeah. basically it is. Like, yeah. There are no mitts. Yeah, that's no true. No armor to put that's on. That's true. You just see the pair running. You don't even, you don't need a right. nice watch. No, you don't. So. We used to not have them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just keep up with the person Glad ahead of you. Yeah. We always hope. <laughs> awesome. Which was easy enough. Um, what about you, Lauren? What do you see in the future for women's running? I mean, I see it progressing, but just, I mean, yeah, like anything, like the science of like pro of progress, it's do it doesn't usually go in a linear, it, does, it doesn't go just in a straight line up, it's usually got peaks and valleys, and so kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. what Beth was saying is, you know, other sports will be popular, and um, there are a lot of sports that are, you know, Seen, seen as, I mean, there are male dominated, um, but I think like I think those other than obviously football because there's not really unless you count. I mean, patter, patter, patter football. Yeah. But I mean, in general, I think that more women are becoming active, and so mm -hmm. I don't see it slowing down mm -hmm. a ton. I, you know, it may plateau for a bit, or like I said, have peaks and valleys, but. Yeah, I hope it continues to grow yeah. at least. Mm -hmm. So I was the uh, first race director for an all women's 5K in Memphis back uh, in the early days. Uh, Bonnie Bell, which was a cosmetic manufacturer, uh -huh. had a series and uh, they had one in New York and some of the big. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a little letter to him and said, "Hey, you know, we could do it down here in Memphis." They sent me some cosmetics to hand out, and uh, so I put notices around and I think I had uh, 
I've got a picture. I think I had 30 women show up, mm -hmm. and it was like astounding. I, I really didn't think there'd be more than about 10. And these 30 women, they enjoyed it, and um, some of them continued on, and I met a lot of uh, women who were, became very competitive. Uh, but that's, and you can just see how that's just snowballed. Uh, when they begin to find out that there is a community they can be involved in, and it's, you can still be a, a woman and still run. You know, we were laughing earlier about, mm -hmm. you know, we, we lose a lot of our inhibitions as run yeah. <laughs> when we run. <laughs> uh, things have, nature has its course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in ultra running. Yeah, oh, okay. when you're in the woods. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the woods are, are the large. Woods are, the woods are large. <laughs> when you're getting to where you're trying to reach a goal to, it's yeah. just anything that yeah. is in my way, it's, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> snot rockets, taking bathroom breaks. It's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> what else? I think you'd ask what was next, if you um, want to answer that. Better. Uh, for me personally, mm -hmm. um, I have a 50K, I'm, well, I'm doing Sillamore okay. um, 50K in next week, mm -hmm. okay, in a week. And then nothing until the fall, I'm doing Tunnel Hill, which is a 50 miler again. And there is a new race that is put on by a dear friend, Brian Williams, um, up at uh, Big Hill Pond State Park. It's the oh, walk, yeah, walking yeah. tall, 25 and 50K. <laughs> so I'm doing that 50K. <laughs> yes. So. That's a pretty park too. I have not ran it. I've heard it's going to be challenging. I'll bet it is. It's a. It's not a flat. That's what uh, I've heard. Park. So I'm really yeah. excited about that one. Um, Plus it's swampy. Yeah, I told him get rid of all the snakes. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm cool. I can't do. I can't, that's the one thing I can deal with anything but that. Don't look mm. down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> and for you? I have um, USA Championship indoors um, next weekend in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Wow. So next weekend. it's altitude. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's 5,000 feet of altitude. And so I'll be trying to um, make the world championships team, which is in England this year. Wow, you, wow. when will you be going out? You know, obviously want to. I fly out on Wednesday okay. to Phoenix mm -hmm. first, so I can get used to the time zone right. change. And then because I train at sea level and it's an altitude race, mm -hmm. I am going to. Um, get to Albuquerque on Friday night and race less than 24 hours later. So typically I like to be on site two days before, but just, um, we have an exercise physiologist friend named Trent, who's, he's actually very, very good. He's the head of the Canadian national team. Um, he's oh, their yeah. physiologist. So like, so he's, him and Max are good friends. We get a lot of our advice from him. Um, and so that was, uh, so that seems to be maybe one of the best options for me um, because Perfect. yeah so um, I'll get there Friday night race Saturday afternoon and then come home <laughs> we'll be watching <laughs> thank yeah, you definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if it's on TV this I, you may be able to stream it on the computer but yeah. I don't know if it's on TV this time but well, I'd like to thank you all for coming in and um, We'll show you the Memphis room. Yes, I want to see it. I've never been out. here before. And, uh, hopefully, we'll have another uh, interview next week. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.